Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folarin. Um, politics straight away this morning. You can imagine we won't be doing anything else. But we're going across to um, Enugu State uh, and look at what the uh, political climate is like there. In fact, um, we're talking about the Enugu State uh, governorship uh, battle. Now, people say, you know, en uh, Enugu is a PDP state. And indeed, indeed it is, and uh, the candidate there, the PDP candidate in Enugu State is uh, Mr. Peter Mba, Mba with an H. And um, the interesting thing here is that APC, if you want the opposition, an opposition party in Enugu State, have just pledged that they indeed will be supporting the candidature of Mr. Peter Mba for to become governor in Enugu State. Um, well, I have someone here to talk to me about governorship battle, and that's uh, in the person of um, Mr. Nana Obodo. He's a PDP chieftain and is the media director, Peter Mba campaign organization in Enugu State. A fine morning to you, Mr. Mba. Good morning. My dear friend, thank you very how much. is Lagos? Very well, thank you. My name is Iori Folani. It's a pleasure to have you this morning. Okay, now it's first of all, uh, well, for those who are hearing about this for the first time, uh, talk about that because it's pretty significant when an opposition party says that, look, without prejudice to the fact that we know who our presidential candidate is, um, when it comes to the governorship, even if he is in an opposition party, uh, we will be supporting him. Tell me about that and how we arrived here. Well, for anybody who has not had the full knowledge of the dynamics of politics in Enugu State might find that interesting. It is non nonetheless quite symbolic, but I must tell you that for quite some time, the governor of Enugu State created a semblance of politics which I prefer to describe as political ecumenism. It's such politics that has been able to bring every person together, irrespective of the party you belong to. How be it? It is also instructive that a, a party like APC would openly come and, and associate with uh, PDP in their choice of a candidate. It also speaks about the candidate we have. When you do a great thing, you don't necessarily make some uh, uh, big noise. Pitamba is a brand. It's a brand that Nigeria even needs. And we are privileged in Enugu to have him as our candidate. And it was not surprising to us that APC as a party came there to underscore that, yes, we may differ on some areas, but for this particular purpose, we are united because it is serviced our dear state. They would have looked at all the credentials and the antecedents of other candidates, and they, they couldn't but agree with us that Enugu, this time around, needs a new vista. Enugu is like a market that has matured, and it can only grow incrementally. And somebody has a knack for creativity. Somebody has a knack for innovative uh, 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 exercise. And he has come to say, we are going to go beyond what we have known in the Enugu before, which is derisively described sometimes as a civil service state. I think we have come to that state where we only grow increment incrementally. Now we want a quantum growth. Therefore, there is going to be a disruptive innovation. And Enugu people are so attuned to that mantra. And uh, I'm not surprised that APC and even indeed other parties to associate with us. And the interesting thing here, I mean, as you said, APC and other parties, the other thing is that um, there is no uh, decamping, uh, so, so to speak. It's like uh, 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 your, your, your principal, Mr. Uh, uh, Peter, I want us to be careful now, not Peter Obi, Peter Mba, uh, is of APC. He's of APC stock, and he remains of APC stock. But I beg your pardon. Is of PDP He's stock. Of the PDP stock. He's of PDP stock and remains of PDP stock, but APC will help him to achieve his aim. 
Uh, now tell me, you, what well, you just indicated that the people of Enugu are not necessarily surprised by uh, those. To talk about the, the neophytes to politics, a very experienced person, uh, well, give, give me give an, uh, an overview of the gentleman. Peter Ba is not new to Enugu people. He's not new because by his track record, Enugu people have come to know him with deep affection. Don't forget, he once served as the chief of staff in Enugu State. But it is not indeed only that. He has been able to touch lives. He has been able to show us that we, have, we are differently blessed and we are differently endowed. And he is a serial entrepreneur. He is somebody who has proven himself both in the public sector and in the private sector. In the public sector, he has come to he got to the height of being the commissioner for finance, even being the chief of staff to the governor there. So he transited from there to his own private business and he made good success out of it. From nothingness, he was able to create a behemoth in Pinacoloye. And the those of us who know the trajectory of all such things feel somehow a pride in associating with him. As a matter of fact, we are grateful that he accepted to serve his state now. He's somebody who knows what it means. For us, let me take it from our tagline, the tagline of, of, the, of his campaign organization. Mm -hmm. He says, tomorrow is here. That thing says a lot about the urgency of the Nigerian situation. But from a positive perspective, it is a summation of our hopes and aspirations. It is indeed a rallying call to action. What it means, therefore, is that in the circumstance of resource control, how does a state like Enugu move? Enugu had thrived so much on the throes of allocation from, uh, uh, from the federation account. It is a civil service state, which, which makes excitement in, in the economy only when civil servants are paid. And we are saying, if we talk about resource control, some people are still thinking that it's something distant to come. But when we talk about oil theft and the rest of it, it is just a, single, a simple euphemism for resource control. And we are now saying, in the inevitability of resource control, how does a state like Enugu fare? And we found somebody who has a solution to it in, in Dr. Pitamba. Pitamba is, has able, been able to translate vision into action in the private business. And they will now say, please come and do it. And he has been able to situate our, our, our situation. He tells us that Enugu has everything going for us. Enugu has location. Enugu has history. Enugu has natural resources. Enugu has human resources. And most of these things had all this while led dormant, perhaps maybe due to a paralysis of the will. And he's saying we have come here now to stimulate growth where the private sector can come and drive our development. I have done it in the public sector. I have done it in the private sector. I know the nuances and foibles of the two. And I'm able to combine it to bring development to Enugu State. That is indeed the cross of the, of the, of the excitement we have in his candidature. Hmm. Uh, of course, you know, it's not as if it's going to be a walkover uh, because your party uh, is not the only person interested in the office. Um, how would you evaluate the uh, strength of the opposition? And... Um, also, maybe comment on uh, the, the Philip, the, uh, the boost that this APC endorsement might have conferred on that project. Well, that endorsement is great in many respects. It was not only to endorse Petamba as our candidate. It was also for us to have opportunity to say thank you to the kindness of that priest in government. That is His Excellency Governor Ifan Uruguay. It's to, to express our gratitude for the fidelity to East Territorial Zone. We are concerned about the debate about whether the rotational template, which has guided us since 1999, would have to con continue. Some believe that it has gone through the, it has gone around the three senatorial zones. Therefore, it should start from where it stopped. Some say it has gone around and it could start from any other way. But the people of Enugu East Territorial Zone reasoned that we have. We appreciate the developmental stride we have made because of the peace that rotation has been able to underscore in Enugu. 
We appreciate the, 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 the friendship we have been able to build because there is hardly any rancor. And then we pleaded with him and said, please, in spite of all the pressure you suffer, kindly know that this thing is now the turn of Enugu East to present their candidate. And he, indeed, he did it. And many things really uh, excite me about his persona. Dr. Ifa Uguay governs with virtues that best, best exemplify that of a perfect leader. He believes in causes larger than himself. He's a master of the science of human relationships because he has humility guiding him. And he was able to translate this, our dream, into action by granting us this thing. And the, the event of Saturday was also, uh, or Friday was also meant to say thank you for the kindness of being fidel to his promise. Then, coming to what impact it, it has to opposition, yes. uh, I will tell you, well, in one respect, Opposition is a beautiful thing in politics, and uh, indeed, democracy cannot survive without opposition. But opposition in Enugu is just, you know, blowing in the wind. One, when we say we shall have a chance and the right to seek to contest, many people had contested initially from any other party, but we know when we say we have zoned this thing, and the mainstream people believe in it, Others are just exercising their rights in constitution in, that the constitution grants them. It is not that it has any effect or any effect. But even most importantly, we do not even see these people as opposition. And that is why we want to say, if you want to talk about opposition, let us talk about the candidates and their credentials, because there is hardly any opposition. Most of them are just members of PDP until after the primaries. And they, 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 they literally confuse opportunism for opportunity. And they, we know that they're not going anywhere. So, singularly speaking, opposition is just symbolic and uh, it doesn't really bother us so much. As much as we pray that we have a vibrant opposition in any good state. Mm. Now, one of the things that uh, Mr. Peter Mba has sort of um, asserted will be the lot of Enugu people, should he indeed emerge uh, victorious. He's talked about, well, something that's similar to what AP, I imagine all the political parties will, of course, there will be one aspect or the other that is common to all of them. Afro, it's, uh, uh, politics is for the service and benefit of the people. And that's social economic transformation that has been promised by Mr. Peter Mba. Um, give me the background to uh, uh, that, that. I mean, first of all, there's work going on now, but he's talking about transformation. And um, I noticed that he was very, very well received by elders, traditional rulers at the ceremony that you uh, spoke about, even governor of old Anambra State, uh, G -G Excellency uh, Jim Warbodo, and all notable names in the place. They were all there singing his praises as a, and he's a relatively young man to those kind of people. But they're saying that we believe in him, that uh, he will do a good job. Talk, talk to me about the socio-economic transformation, which I said is not dissimilar from what APC, uh, which is not the same as PDP, is offering. Well, uh, I must say that um, in the East Senatorial Zone, we must accept is peculiarly endowed with bright uh, uh, minds, bright individuals with, with, with so much cleverness. However, in every country, we do not in any way diminish their profile and credentials. But what we are saying is that in every circumstance, you have to distill their comparative advantages and the prices, not really driving the distance because the time we live in calls for some deeper reflection. It calls for some deeper articulation of issues beyond the normal. It's a very perilous time. We are still talking about uh, uh, economy as it is today. How do you, in the next few months, we, be, we shall be buying fuel, maybe beyond 500. And we're looking at who is that person, who is going to be creative enough to disrupt what we have and bring a new template that can guide us. Yes, other candidates may have their own qualities, but in this kind, in this circumstance, it's not everybody that will win. It is the best that we have chosen. And we have chosen him based on his track record, based on his persona, He's a man with whom Enugu East have said we are well pleased. He's a man who employs silent dignity to win what all the noise do not win. 
you may you may not see him making noise. You may not see him uh, 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 grandstanding. He diligently goes about his way, but within this thing, he's a man who is created to change Nigeria. And let us start from Enugu State. And we're excited that we have him, and he has accepted to be our candidate. Okay. Given the people that have endorsed him, yes, you know the the profile of somebody like Jim Wobot, the first governor of Enugu uh, of the old Anambra State, yes. a former senator, a former minister. In fact, a man who has the charisma to turn around the Enugu State, but an elder statesman who now knows that it is better for us to think about the future, not the tribalism of the present, as it may be. Or is it Senator Ken in the mind? He was able to transcend party divisions and party dichotomy and say, look, we may belong to different political with our candidates these days the state rendered. Okay, said, one, one, one moment. I beg your pardon. One, one moment, Mr. Right. Bodo. I beg your pardon for interrupting you. One moment, because a caller has been waiting to contribute to the program. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. George in Lagos. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good and morning, uh, greetings to your guest. Yes. Uncle Yori, I think this political decision that APC has made is, in, is, a, is a step in the right direction. Because if you look at the dynamics, I don't see the possibility of APC winning gubernatorial election in any good state as things stand now. So what they need to do is to concentrate on where we can get the best and do something that they know they cannot get. For example, I know that the Enugu State Governor is, uh, is among the G5 governors of the PDP and that the presidential candidate of the PDP is unlikely to receive his support. So APC might as well capitalize on this gesture to get more votes for the presidential candidate of the APC. Because I don't see APC winning the gubernatorial election in that state as things stand today. The party, the APC as a party, should do the same thing in reverse, I would recommend. It would be a waste of time and resources to think that they can win the gubernatorial election in river state where Wiki is standing with all what Wiki has done in that state. And in, in this, uh, Uncle Yori, again, the APC as a party in rivers is saying, Taka, the key people that should have kept the party together for more than six years, they can't even see eye to eye. So they, they should do the same thing in rivers and stop wasting money in rivers. <laughs> That's what is just a suggestion. Thank, Thank you very much, Mr. George, calling in uh, with that um, contribution. Uh, Mr. Obodo, uh, you, you heard that. Uh, any comments? Well, I'm, I'm glad he knows that in Enugu State, it is really just a misnomer to categorize some people as opposition. But we are quite good, though, to address them as Your Excellency after they have done their bit. Because sometimes there are certain things that persuade people in political contests. Some of them just want to excise the rights conferred on them by the Constitution. Some want to be addressed as His Excellency. Some who want to contest for Senate already begin to bear the, 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 the distinction as a distinguished senator. We joke with it, and we can play with it, but in any state, it is beautifully clearly defined by the caller that it is impossible for APC to expect any miracle in any Not in the face that it has come to be that even the crucial leaders of the party have come to say, we may differ in political platforms, but this candidate will stand by him. We know what he can do. So I agree with the caller. But uh, uh, it needs to be said, uh, just as uh, 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 that caller, Mr. George in Lagos, uh, had said that he even sees a similar situation, for example, in River State. Uh, he was being very pragmatic about it, and he feels that uh, APC itself is, is being quite pragmatic about the situation here. But there is no doubt that when it comes to, at least in Enugu, you know, uh, because your governor, uh, your sitting governor is of the G5, I imagine that um, the understanding is that when that time comes, people know where to put their vote. That in that case, they'll be voting for the uh, APC presidential candidate. Is that a safe conclusion? Uh, no, uh, I, I wouldn't subscribe essentially to that. 
in the sense that what we play in Nigeria is partisan politics and is based on party. And then um, G5 might exist, but it's a contestation of interest. I'm sure that PDP is doing everything to who feel that they have not been listening to. Mm -hmm. As we wait for that, 24 hours is enough in politics. Indeed. And I'm sure uh, PDP, which we subscribe to, will be able to come after this thing. I right. always believe that in life uh, and in every institution, there may not be any man who, love, who is not so loved by God that nature might not place a banana peel on him. But... Okay, I beg your pardon. Let, let me bring in Chris. Chris is on the line from Enugu. Good morning, Chris. Hello, I'm with you, Yuri. Thank you very much for calling in. Go ahead, well, please. On television, the, your guest is still speaking. I'm watching my television. Okay. It's true now. Okay. Okay, let me go ahead. Hello. Good morning. Yeah. Chris, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know my fears now. Eh? I hope the decision of the APC candidate is um, subscribed to by other members of the APC. Hello? I can hear you. Uh -huh. My fear is that the decision of the APC governorship candidate may not carry along the generality of members of the APC in any way. And then I remember that name. The name of the APC candidate is one Mr. Uchenai. Are you with me? Yes, 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 I can hear you. Uh, and I remember one who came, that was in 1999, who won election to the National Assembly. That's my president. Overnight, he just surrendered his seat and said he's inviting Jim Wobodo from another party to take over his seat. So I'm, I'm suspicious of their character called Uchenna. You understand? All right, I hear you. With me. I hear uh, you. My home state is not Enugu. My home state is Anambra. You okay. understand? So but why would the same Uchenna, who in 1999 won an election into the Senate, and then unilateral is it to Jim Wobbe, and then again, a major opposition party in the state, and then the party in power at the federal level, he suddenly succumb, is subscribing to the candidacy of the PDP person. You understand? So may, may, maybe maybe may that's what they call strategy alone. in politics. Yes. But let's hear from yes. Mr. Ogbodo. Thank you very much for calling in, uh, uh, Chris. Uh, maybe just before we go on break, would you like to briefly touch on his, um, well, assumption, apprehension, suspicion, call it what you will. Well, I may not want to talk so much about his thesis because somehow it is not the, the true position. I must put it on record that it's not the true position that he was expressing. Uh, the candidate still runs that he's running. But, you see, he may be a priest, with, uh, a priest without congregation. If somebody is still running and the, those who ought to be championing his listening are saying, we are now confident that we have found a man who will deliver a new I don't see any reason anybody making noise about whether he continues to say he's running or not. But let it be on record that he has not abandoned his pursuit. He's still pursuing it. But all I know is that nobody can divorce himself from his environment and still retain his identity. In the circumstance of those who ought to drive his campaign, saying, young man, come back. Let us be pragmatic about what we are doing. There's no need wasting your money because Enugu is PDP and PDP is Enugu. But even more interestingly, we have looked at the candidates. This is what they said. The leadership of the leadership of APC that came, what they said is not that the party has abandoned their, their status as party. What they're saying is that we have been able to look at the credentials of the candidates and we find that of Dr. Peter but so ennobling that we have to really come come together to promote it. All, all, all right.